Hello, I'm Kirk Hansen, Executive Director of the Markala Center for Applied Ethics at Santa Clara University. We're fortunate today to have with us Vice Chancellor Travis Laster of the Delaware Chancery Court. Vice Chancellor, thank you. Um, I'd, I'd love to start with that question. What role does incorporation play in the regulation and guidance for corporate behavior in the United States? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the role of the corporation is a quite significant one. Uh, at this point, I think it's fair to say that the vast bulk of our economic activity mm -hmm. uh, is driven by large corporate entities. Uh, and there have been different theories as to what corporations are ranging from the concept of the corporation as an artificial person mm -hmm. to the concept of the corporation as a nexus of contracts, a nexus of relationships among stakeholders ranging from employees to customers to suppliers to stockholders. I tend to take a more utilitarian view of the corporation and its role. Uh, I think it is simply an engine for wealth creation that allows people to take on risk and pursue risky activities that they would not be willing to do if they had to put all of their personal assets at stake. So the invention of the corporation allows disparate individuals and investors to pool capital that can be then used to make investments uh, where each individual is not putting at risk their own personal assets. And at this point, the corporation is so well established and many of those rules or common understandings are stated in the incorporation documents? Uh, at, there are three levels of law, uh, actually four levels of law that apply. Uh, first and foremost is the statutory rules that govern the incorporation from the state of incorporation. Mm -hmm. So in our state, Delaware, we have the Delaware General Corporation Law, first adopted in 1899 mm -hmm. uh, and regularly updated on an annual basis by a committee of, of expert lawyers. That statute is broadly enabling, which means that you, in setting up a corporation, have flexibility to choose factors that you think will be better for your mm -hmm. corporation or not. You put those factors, those choices initially in a document called the Certificate of Incorporation. That is a, it is a corporate specific document that states the rules of the road for how the entity will be operated. The next step up is the bylaws. Uh, those are uh, uh, mainly procedural uh, and tell uh, more about how uh, questions as a practical matter will be addressed. And then overall is common law decisions from our courts. Now, each level trumps. So a bylaw can't conflict with the charter. Mm -hmm. The charter can't conflict with a binding provision of the statute. Got it. What kinds of conflicts end up in the chancery court or the equity court? Is The people who run corporations, uh, be they the directors or the officers, are operating corporations on behalf of the corporate entity mm -hmm. and on behalf of its shareholders. And as a result, they are quasi-trustees. They're in the nature of trustees. They are not, in fact, trustees. They are directors and officers, but they are fiduciaries akin to trustees. And as fiduciaries, they owe duties of care and they owe duties of loyalty. They are not supposed to be operating the corporation in their self-interest, nor are they supposed to be doing it haphazardly as if uh, they weren't doing it on behalf of someone else. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so what my court is called upon to do is to not only interpret the statutes and the rules of the road that people have devised for themselves, but also to apply this overlay of fiduciary duties. And that protects not just the, the owners, the shareholders, but a broader class of people? Uh, in, our, in Delaware, uh, we are quite clear that fiduciaries run to the corporation as a whole and through the corporation to the stockholders. Uh, there are recurring arguments um, uh, by academics and by other thought leaders to say, no, fiduciary duties should run more broadly. Mm -hmm. You should, for example, uh, have a fiduciary duty to employees or other constituencies. Uh, what we in Delaware believe is that uh, a person has difficulty serving two masters. Mm -hmm. And so if fiduciaries run to multiple constituencies, uh, what you've effectively done is uh, you've either given people no, disc uh, no discretion or complete discretion. 
uh, they can pick any of these beneficiaries and justify a decision in that regard, mm -hmm. uh, and hence they have the ability to do essentially whatever they want. So our system is very focused on stockholders. Now that doesn't, and our duties run through the corporation to the stockholders. It doesn't mean that you should not consider employees. It doesn't mean that you should not consider your suppliers or your customers. But it does mean that you should consider what is best for the entity and for its stockholders. And you are good to your employees because it's good for the entity and good for the stockholders, not because you owe a specific duty that runs to your employees. Mm -hmm. Do people come, do so many large companies incorporate in Delaware because you're easy on them? <laughs> um, this is another area that, that academics have debated at length. And uh, there's a, a lengthy uh, uh, scholarship on this. Um, our view of it is that we have two constituencies that we serve. Um, first, we believe very strongly that managers who are not conflicted shouldn't be second-guessed. That is a process of deference to management. Who don't have a conflict of interest. Who don't have a conflict of interest, exactly. Um, so that is a, a pro managerialist view that we think ultimately in the long run maximizes value for stockholders. Mm -hmm. At the same time though, our duties run towards stockholders mm -hmm. and the ultimate constituency of the corporation we believe is value for stockholders. Our view of the law is that the common law in particular and the corporate law in general has to always mediate between these two tensions. There are other jurisdictions who have decided as a policy matter that they will solely favor management. So one of the things that you saw in the late 1980s in response to takeover attempts was legislatures passing statutes that were very protective of incumbent managers and said things like managers can consider whomever they want in responding to a takeover bid, hmm. including employees, and therefore can resist it. Uh, Delaware has heightened standards of review that apply in those situations. You had states that said we won't apply those heightened standards of review. Those are managerialist positions. Um, we in Delaware have tried to, to uh, craft a middle path mm -hmm. that is beneficial to both managers but also to stockholders, to the investors of capital. Mm -hmm. We may not always get the balance right. We're always striving to get the balance right. Uh, but uh, I would argue, and I think uh, quite strongly, uh, that we're attempting to, to chart a middle course. Thank you very much. It's good to be here.